the next case on the court's docket. This is cause number C-19-0072 CPS. Uh, this is in the interest of Serenity Heaven Rodriguez, a child. The case is set for a permanency hearing and pretrial. The uh, trial is currently set for August 13th, 2021 at 9 a.m. The hearing day is being conducted pursuant to emergency orders of the Texas Supreme Court <clears throat> via Zoom video conference. Participating in the hearing today on behalf of the department is uh, caseworker Trey Davis and uh, Supervisor Isabella Reyes and Regional Attorney Deborah Keenum. The uh, mother of the uh, child is Jeanette Navarro and she is participating in the hearing today along with her attorney, Brad Harrelson. The uh, father of the uh, child is Gilbert Rodriguez, who is incarcerated in a Texas Department of Criminal Justice facility. He is not present. Todd Simons is appointed as his attorney at Lightham, and Mr. Simons is not currently present in the courtroom. The uh, attorney and guardian at Lightham for the uh, child is Andrew Graves, and Mr. Graves is present in the uh, courtroom. All right. Uh, Ms. Uh, Keenum, is the department ready to proceed? Yes, Your Honor. I would ask that Ms. Navarro please turn on her camera. It's on. Okay. I'm sorry. It wasn't on a minute ago. Um, All right. Um, just a second. Uh, if y'all stand by for just a second, I'm trying to check on Mr. Simon's uh, status and also Mr. Rodriguez. All right. As I indicated, this is set for a permanency hearing and pretrial. All parties in council previously present remain present. Uh, Mr. Simons is uh, present now. Uh, we're ready to proceed. I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Davis and Mr. Rodriguez and Ms. Navarro. If each of you could raise your right hands, please. Each of you solemnly swear affirming testimony you give today before the court will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So happy God. I swear. I swear. Thank you. All right, uh, we're ready, Ms. Keenum. Yes, Your Honor, the department would call Jeanette Navarro. All right, thank you. Go Ms. Ahead. Navarro, please please state your name for the record. Jeanette Navarro. Do you, do you have any additional names that you need to provide uh, Mr. Davis for consideration um, that would be relatives or have have a prior relationship with serenity to be considered for placement for serenity um i already gave him that information miss keenum it was for my cousin contacted him, him as well she's my first blood cousin she lives out of el paso and she has provided trey davis with all that information already uh, last week as we speak okay and so last week you provided mr davis with an additional relative Yes, because um, the ones that I had provided before, which was my father out of El Paso, um, was never considered. I don't know what happened to that. And then she was placed with my mother and my daughter, but I don't know exactly. I don't communicate with them because of, you know, this situation. So um, I don't know exactly. I know that uh, my cousin told me that she was moved and I don't know exactly where she's at. But uh, anyway, that's irrelevant. Um, that's all the information that I have. My cousin. What is the name of your cousin? Her name is Lisette. Media what, is, what is her last name? Her, her, I don't know exactly her last name because of the fact that we don't speak that much, but she uh, contacted me. I can uh, text her right now if you like. And she has information already, though. She's talked to him. So do you know where she actually lives in El Paso? No, I don't. Do you have her actual phone number? Yes, I do. Okay. And you've provided that with Trey? Yes, I gave him his phone number and she said that she contacted him. And she said, yes, I've sent him my information and I ha haven't heard anything from him. That was this Saturday. Um, any other relatives that you need to provide to the department? I have provided my father. I don't know if you guys still have that uh, on the list or not. I'm not sure, but I did provide my father as well. 
besides your father and Lisette, last name unknown, do you have any other relatives to provide? I've, besides my mom and my daughter, uh, Dominic, no. On what day was Tamaka diagnosed with COVID? I, at the time, I wouldn't be able to tell you that. Um, I only know about my results and my situation. I, I don't know, ma'am. I would have to, you would have to talk to him about that. Are you diagnosed positive for COVID? No, ma'am, but I am quarantined. And on what day were you quarantined? Um, let me look at that information. I sent it to Trey and to my probation officer as well. Give me a minute. Uh, on 7-21-2020, patient Jeanette Navarro, 38 years of old, female, presented, tested, COVID-19 tested, and quarantined for, uh, let's see, uh, it says for three weeks until I get my new results, so I have to take another test, ma'am. Now, he is positive, and his results and information is through the VA. Mine's through Shannon. Now, when we talked yesterday, you are no longer employed with UPS. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, since yesterday, have you found employment? No, ma'am. I'm still receiving the unemployment through the uh, Texas Workforce Commission. And um, I, like I said, I filed two, submitted two applications recently that was through the Blue Cross Blue Shield and also through the uh, ADAC in place. When I went up there to do my screening, I seen that they were hiring, so I decided why not? Let me apply. And you completed your ADAC screening, is that correct? That is correct. Was that completed on July the 23rd of 2021? Um, I, I'm not sure, ma'am. I would have to look through it or Trey has it. Was that screen completed in person? No, I did it through the phone. How did you see that ADAC was hiring? They have a sign outside. They've been having one for a minute. What is this in reference to, ma'am? I'm, I'm confused. So they have a sign outside of where? Out of their office. And they also have it on the um, jobs, the uh, jobposting.com, uh, careers.com. I mean, they have them anywhere. Did I leave my house? Is that what you want to know? You can ask me that. As far as your parenting, have you begun attending parenting classes? Well, I can't right now. I cannot physically go, but I already signed up with them. And But until I give them another negative result, then I am allowed to go in there. I do not want to, you know, get people sick in case I carry the virus and I'm just not showing negative. And where did you sign up for the parenting classes? I, I called and I did it through the phone, through that, that um, the pregnancy center off of Sherwood Way that Trey gave me. I called Trey and he gave me all that information. So I called and I asked him if I could sign up. So I signed up and they told me I got to go. They have Mondays to Thursdays from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. And then they have Tuesdays and Wednesdays, I believe, uh, from 10 to 12. Something like that. I got it written down. So you've received the information on when to appear, but you've not actually appeared at any of the actual parents' 
parenting class? No, the, the parenting classes that I've done before for Serenity were online. I did a four hour course online that was uh, actually uh, on your CPS Child Protective Services website. I went on the website and I clicked on the link for parenting classes online during the COVID when nobody, when we weren't quarantined, that nobody was allowed to leave. That's when I signed up and I did those. But I'm also doing additional, the ones that are required because Trey said that the judge might not accept them, this and that, this and that. So I decided to go ahead and do those ones too, just to have my back and to get my daughter home. Have you permiss uh, participated in the domestic classes? No, ma'am, I have not. In your assessment, did you let the assessor know that you had previously used? Why don't you look at the assessment, ma'am? You can ask, see all those, I mean. Uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Navarro, you need to answer the questions that are asked, please. I did not let him know of something that I have not done. No. Yesterday, you, you testified evidence that you had previously used that. No, I did correct? not. No, I did not. I'd never testified that in court. That's a lie. Don't evidence, lie on me now. Evidence was put in that you had admitted to prior use. Is that not correct? No, that's not correct. So you don't recall the social worker? That he lied, what he said yesterday, the lies he said? I do recall, yes. So you now deny admitting to previous drug use? I have never admitted to previous use, Ms. Kingdom. I'm starting to get upset with this, Your Honor. I don't know why she continues to, to call me. Ms. Uh, Ms. Navarro, I'm sorry if you're getting upset, but this is relevant evidence and you need to answer the questions. Well, I, I've answered it to her since yesterday. I, I'm, 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 not, I'm not debating it with you. I'm just telling you, uh, yes, this is a question to answer. It's not your opportunity to ask questions. Your attorney can ask you follow-up questions yes, Your Honor, uh, as we proceed. Thank you. Yes, sir. Go ahead, Ms. Kim. Have you provided a list of all of your medications that you're currently taking to Mr. Davis? Not to Mr. Davis. I did give him to Mr. Gonzalo Rios, and he, he was supposed to relay that to uh, Trey Davis. At the time, I'm not taking any medication. During the past year, I have been taking medication, which was given to uh, Mr. Gonzalo Rios. I'm not sure if my new attorney has that information or not, but... Um, I'd be more than happy that to provide that list. It was also submitted as exhibits already to the court for this case. Have you addressed your PTSD? I don't have PTSD. Have you obtained a psychological evaluation? Yes, I have not a assessment, an actual evaluation? Well, I, I went to my doctor of choice. I am at Freedom to do that, ma'am. I don't have to go through the one you choose for me. I paid for one out of pocket and I did it myself. I went and I got assessment or evaluated and that's good enough for me. It's, it's, it's a, he is registered by the Texas Association Bar and he's, a, you know, I don't know. Sorry, I didn't go through your people. Has Trey gone over to you the issues with the document that you provided and why that's not a psychological evaluation? Of course he has. And why the individual that you went to is not qualified to give a psychological evaluation? According to who, ma'am, is he not qualified to you? Objection, non responsive I agree, Miss. Uh, I'm going to tell you again, Miss Navarro. You need to listen to the question and answer the question. This is not your opportunity to ask Miss Keenum questions. Okay. Miss Keenum, do you want to re-ask your question? 
has Mr. Davis gone over with you those concerns on why that is not yes. an acceptable psychological evaluation? Yes. Have you gone to MHMR to have an evaluation completed? No, ma'am. Do you have any copies of your documentation from your plea agreement related to the incident involving Serenity? I do, and I can give you my probation officer's name, and you can call him too if you need to. I release a form of information you can have. And have you provided um, the name of that probation officer to Mr. Davis? Uh, he has not asked me, no. What is the name of your probation officer? Give me a minute. Bear with me, I'm pulling that up. Okay. Here we go. Grover Jared. Like Jared, the diamond, Jared. Grover. G R O V E R. And do you have an appointment date to meet with Mr. Jared? Yes, I do. And what date is that? I don't know it off rip, ma'am. It's in my emails. And is he located in Lubbock or is he in Tom Green County? He's in Tom Green County. And since yesterday, you were able to get this matter transferred from Lubbock to Tom Green County? I've been transferred it, ma'am. I paid all my fees, so I transferred it. I can transfer it anywhere in the state of Texas that I choose to. So it's been transferred to Tom Green because I reside in Tom Green County for now. But um, yes, it's been transferred. And but when, it's, still, it's still out of Lubbock. I will always be out of Lubbock. And when was your probation transferred? I don't know. I'll give you his phone number. You can contact them. Any questions you have regarding that, I don't know. Okay, what is his number? Three two five. 659-6544, and his name is Jared Grover. Pass the witness. Thank you, uh, Mr. Harrelson. Any questions for Ms. Navarro? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Jeanette, were you notified of a change in placement for Serenity? I got an email um, letting me know that Gilbert's wife's aunt was being, uh, like, they had added her as on the list, but I spoke to Trey Davis, and he told me that he was not even considering doing that, that she was going to remain where she was. So I, I said, okay. And that's when I provided him with the information for my cousin out of El Paso. He continued to reassure me that they were not gonna move her. So I said, okay. I looked at the Odyssey records for Tom Green County, nothing pulled up. So I went ahead and said, okay, everything's good. I don't need to worry about it. So no, I wasn't notified. He said nothing was gonna happen. So to your knowledge, has she been moved? Yes, I spoke to my cousin last night and she told me that my daughter had been moved Friday. And that was from placement with your mother, correct? Yes, sir. Have you had uh, any contact with Serenity uh, since, since your arrest on interference with child custody? No, sir, I have not. Okay, and when was that? Um, the last time that I had any contact with her was the day that I got arrested in uh, Garza County, sir. And what day was that? Um, I'm going to say November something of 
2019? God, I'm not sure. It's been two years, almost two years, sir, that I've seen my daughter. Now, on your probation out of Lubbock County, are there any orders that prohibit you from having contact with Serenity? No, sir. All those were removed the day that I signed for the five-year plea bargain with uh, Lubbock County. There's been some, Ms. Keenum had a question regarding what was purported to be your history of, um, in testimony yesterday during Julian's case. The affidavit on following that case said that you had admitted to some abuse, but it was 10 years prior to Julian's case. Do you recall that? Yes, it's and been over 10 years, correct. Okay, so, so did you make that statement to, uh, or did you make that admission that yes, 10 years prior to Julian's birth or over 10 years you had used, which would be over 10 years in the past? To be precise, the, the exact time that I used was back in 20, 2006. Ms. Keenum's question was when you did your ADAC assessment over the phone, Mm -hmm. Did you give that information to them? No, because all it asked for was in the past, um, if I'm not mistaken, it said like the past couple of months, what it was referring to was months. And going back on months, I, I did not feel that I need to let them know what I did when I was 19 years old. Okay, so you don't recall that there was any question about any history at all, just for recent history? Correct. That's what I recall. Have you been maintaining regular contact with Trey Davis? Yes, I have. Okay. Are you willing to work services on Serenity's case, just like you've stated you were in Julian's case? Yes. Okay. If the department, because of their procedures or guidelines, mm -hmm. has decided that the assessment, the psychological assessment that you when and got on your own, yes. does not meet their requirements. Are you willing to do one at the direction of the department, a new one at their cost? I'm iffy on that. I cannot say yes and I cannot say no, but well, I'm you, willing to, to go to, an, to, a, to somebody else, not a problem, but I just, to go through their people, I don't trust their people. I'm sorry, but too much has happened that I don't trust them or their people. I mean, I'm willing, you know what? Yes, I'll go, I'll do it. I'll okay. do it. And because my next question was going to be, you stated on the record yesterday that you were willing to cooperate yes, I'll do it. And, and do what the department asked you uh, in regard to Julian's case. Yes, I'll do it. Okay. And that you had realized that your course of action up to this point had, had not been beneficial for anyone. Right. And so that you're going to look at it or come at it with a different approach. Is that right? I'll do it. Yes. I apologize. I just, I get a little bit upset because I think of everything, but that's in the past. Let's move forward. Yes. I'll do whatever I got to do for my kids. Let's do it. Okay. So there's a service plan on Serenity's case. Are you willing to look at that service plan and work with Mr. Davis and completing those requirements. Why not? Just say yes or no. Yes. Okay. And 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 the reason to do it for you is 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 what is what what is your new reason? What's your reason for your change of heart at this point compared to your approach up until this point? Because I realized that I was wrong. I realized that the way I was approaching things was not the, the right way, that fighting the system, getting mad at the system and feeling like, you know, they're just doing it against me was incorrect. They were doing it for the safety of my children, whether or not my, you know, my feelings of it was accurate or not at the end of the, of the, of, of the whole situation. What matters is that I do what 
what needs to be done for my children. It's not about me. It's not about how I feel about with, with Miss Deborah Kingdom, if it's personal or not. At the end of the day, I feel that I'm going to do what I got to do to get these children home because that's where they need to be at home with me. All BS to the side. They need to come home. Are you asking the court today to allow you to have telephone contact with Serenity? Yes, I am. And possible visitation if, if I could. Thank you. I'll pass the witness, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Simons, any questions? No, sir. No questions. All right, Mr. Graves, any questions? Hi, Ms. Navarro, how are you today? I am good. <laughs> All right, uh, you've testified yesterday as well as today regarding your probation out of Lubbock County. And Mr. Harrelson asked you if you have any restrictions based upon your conditions of probation for uh, any type of contact with Serenity. And you stated that that was all dropped when you took your probation. Right, the order of the no contact with the victim, which was my daughter was removed whenever I was, the charge was dropped from a kidnapping to interfering with child custody. Um, it went from a first degree or a second degree felony to a state jail felony and the no contact order was lifted. And I, was, and I am allowed to have contact with my daughter so I'm just asking and begging, pleading with you guys, the courts that you allow me. Sorry, let me stop you. Let me stop you there. Just, I'm just asking that question. Uh, so, and you, you've just, you've just, uh, that was my next question is that this originally was indicted as a kidnapping case, which is a much higher degree of felony. And it was, it was knocked down. You pled it to a state jail felony for interfering with custody. Is that right? No. I was originally charged with interfering with child custody. Once I was under Garza County, they changed it from interfering with child custody to kidnapping. They said that that was what Tom Green County um, CPS okay, had, had told You, you just said that you were, you were Better answer the question, please. That's not a judge talking to me. You're, I, I'm gonna, let me stop for just a moment. Jeanette, all I'm asking you, you just testified that you were indicted for kidnapping is my question. I'm not sure if I was indicted for kidnapping. I cannot sit here and lie to you. If That's you okay. Me, okay. I can okay. explain to uh, you. When, but know. you ended up pleading it to the interfering with custody. Correct. Okay. And that's a state jail felony. Yes. And I think you testified yesterday that that plea was done within the last few weeks. Is that right? Um, something like that. Um, about a, a month ago, June. That's fine. Just within, you know, within the last couple of months. Is that right? Yes, June. And, and you, you, if you recall, you testified yesterday that you were not able to recall all of your terms or conditions of your probation. Uh, have, did they provide you with a copy of your terms and conditions of probation? I got them right here. So oh, you've been given a my, yes. Okay. And did, did you sign those and yes. return them to your court? Yes. Who was your attorney in Lubbock? Jody. Myatt, J-O-D-Y, at M-Y-A-T-T-L-A-W-F-I-R-M.com. Jody Myatt Law Firm com. Jody at my A-T-T Law Firm com. That is his email, and his name is Jody Myatt out of Lubbock, Texas. Um, do you need a phone number? No, I can find if I need to reach Mr. Myatt. Okay. Thank you, though. Yes, sir. Thank you. Pass the witness. Thank you, Ms. Keenum. Did you have any other questions? Uh, it, uh, so yesterday you didn't have your conditions of probation. Is that correct? No, I did. But when you asked me, I didn't recall exactly what they were. 
and I didn't want to be going through them while we were in the middle of court, but I do have them. So you can provide a copy of those conditions of probation to Mr. Davis. Is that correct? Yeah, not a problem. Pass the witness. All right, thank you. Any other questions for Ms. Navarro from any of the attorneys? No, Your Honor. Thank you. All right, Ms. King, next witness. Yes, Your Honor, the department will call uh, Trey Davis. All right, thank you. Uh, let's see, Mr. Davis, yeah, if you could unmute your device, please. Uh, please Thank state you. your name for the record. Trey Davis. Uh, Mr. <coughs> Davis, uh, did you have an opportunity to go over uh, Ms. Navarro's ADAC assessment? I did. And is there a section for her to disclose whether or not there was prior use? Yes, there is. And in that section, did she disclose that she had prior use? Uh, no, she marked it no. So is the department requesting that Ms. Navarro go ba back to ADAC and recomplete an assessment? Yes, ma'am. As far as um, the relative that Ms. Navarro provided to you last week, where are you at in looking at that relative? Uh, I've, got, I've gotten her information from her. Um, I've run her backgrounds as far as uh, Texas goes. Uh, she just moved here from Nevada. Um, so she's going to, we're going to need to be getting a, a FBI background check on her. And so far, uh, once I get the backgrounds on her, then I'll staff with my supervisor uh, about the feasibility. But I've, I've maintained contact with her. I, I've talked to her this week also. Okay. So you've reached out to her she we did find out she's lived out of state within the time frame she'll need an fbi background check that she has to complete on her own and provide to the department is that correct yes ma'am okay do you recall why the department was not able to place with miss navarro's father i do not recall why i know that it was looked into and ruled out okay so uh <clears throat> you can work on getting with Ms. Navarro and her attorney, relook into that and, and, and get back with them as to what the issue was with her father and why we were not able to look at him for placement. Yes, ma'am. Um, the child was moved, is that correct? Yes. And under the circumstances, um, Ms. Navarro, did you provide her prior knowledge or what? Um, we, we don't, uh, at this time, we don't uh, uh, share uh, Serenity's placement locations or anything like that with Ms. Navarro. Um, and that comes from a history <clears throat> of prior placements um, and um, issue in El Paso and threats that went on very early on in the case. Action, Your Honor, that's about as leading as it gets. Same. What are the issues that led to the reason why the department and the prior court orders that lead us to not share this information? Um, currently, Serenity's uh, now been placed in her eighth placement. Uh, previous placements have been uh, lost due to um, interference or threats from Ms. Navarro to the placements or surrounding the placements, including relative placements. Um, and so, and then after the, the kidnapping of the child in, Objection, in Lubbock. Your Honor. Objection, Your Honor, that's mischaracterizing the evidence. There's no kidnapping. Yes, sir. Well, um uh, i'll sustain it uh in the way it was used okay go ahead you can complete your answer mr uh, Davis, after, after the incident in lubbock after the incident in lubbock um uh since then and due to previous placements disruptions we we no longer provide placement information to mr borrow at this time and there are prior prior orders that prevent the department from sharing that information. Is that correct? Correct. There are prior orders that prevent Ms. Navarro from having contact with this child. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. 
Um, as far as these uh, changes in Ms. Navarro's status, um, have you had an opportunity yet to look and see what has been lifted yet as far as her, whether or not she's allowed to have contact through the Lubbock court or not? Uh, no, uh, she's told me that she's going to get me a copy of uh, her uh, probation orders and, and, the, and, and she was transferring her probation down here. So I was going to get that information from her probation officer to find out what the terms of her. So I don't know anything about the terms of her uh, plea deal. Uh, so you don't have any of that information at this time? No, ma'am. What would your, the department, what is the department's <clears throat> position as far as visitation for uh, the child? Uh, we don't believe at this time it's in the best interest of the child. Um, Serenity is going to, uh, now it's in this placement, she's going to be getting back into therapy. And uh, we believe that uh, we'd, we'd like to get the therapist's recommendation and the therapist to uh, discuss that and go over that with her and work her back towards uh, visitation with the mother, if that's appropriate. And would you, what is the department's position on the phone visitation? I believe that falls into the same category. As far as the mom's services, uh, what services does the mother need to complete for the department to look at possibly <clears throat> returning this child to her? Um, to this point, there's really been, uh, besides maintaining a home and uh, at times maintaining employment, there's been very little services that have been completed or, or done uh, in order to observe changes after them. Um, testing, uh, currently, when uh, I request a test, um, she's going and getting them somewhere else. Uh, one time it was seven days later. I can't accept that. And then uh, test somewhere else, even though I get the results, I don't know if those were observed tests, were those brought in tests. There's nothing on there to document any of that. And so I'm, I'm gonna be unable to accept those tests. And so testing, and then uh, obviously the ADAC assessment and uh, the domestic is very important and hadn't been started yet. I'm sorry, I'm losing my voice today. <clears throat> um, as far as uh, Mr. Rodriguez, uh, where are we at uh, with considering or able to consider his fictive girlfriend's relative or that individual? Um, I, I checked with, with that and, and ran the backgrounds and everything. And I've talked to the, uh, I believe it's the aunt of his wife. Um, I don't know how that relates there, but aunt of, aunt of his wife. Um, she has a, an RTB from a 2005 case. Um, and so that keeps us from being able to, to start the home study process on her. I did send her a form that she could fill out and send to the department, um, allowing her to uh, have that re uh, have that art, a reason to believe regraded or reassessed to see if it um, if they want to change it or not. And so I've given her that form so she can look at that also. What is the current permanency plan for this child? The current permanency plan is unrelated adoption. And the reason why the child was moved from the relatives, they had absolutely no intention of keeping her long-term. Is that correct? That's correct. As far as Mr. Rodriguez, is he able to make any progress while he's currently incarcerated on his services? Um, we got the uh, um, parenting course to him. Uh, but there's really not a lot of progress he can make while he's in there, um, just by the, the sake the fact that he's in there. Right now. And then how long again is his, um, that he, is, he's, his sentence, because he's, he, uh, he's in for a penitentiary sentence, is that correct? Correct. He, he's sentenced to, uh, uh, the longest charge is 13 years, but um, I believe he's eligible for parole in 2022. Pass the witness. All right, thank you. Mr. Harrelson, any questions? Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Davis, the information I have says that the tests that my client has done 
when you request, but at her own expense with her own providers through West Texas Rehabilitation Commission. Is, does that, is, does that uh, comply with the information you have? That, what, what says that she can do it through West Texas Rehab? No, I'm asking you, is, are these tests that you said you cannot accept through West Texas Rehab? <clears throat> uh, two of them are, yes, sir. And where were the other tests? The other one I had, I don't know where it came from. Uh, it didn't have, it didn't have any identifying information on it. And so it's your testimony that West Texas rehab tests are, are not acceptable? Uh, it's not acceptable if, if, when we order it, we determine on there whether it's observed, whether it's monitored, whether it's none of the above um, and all that. Uh, and all our tests are observed. I have no way on her test to know whether it was observed or not. What's to keep you from calling West Texas Rehab and finding out what their procedure is for this? Well, their procedure is any of the above. Uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not following you. Is there? Because if she's going to. How do you know that? How do you know that their procedure is any of the above? Because West Texas Rehab used to be uh, uh, contracted through the Department of Family Protective services also and we used to order from them and so you did have the same three choices with them also to my knowledge that hasn't changed unless they changed it up okay so therefore even if they did change it up then i wouldn't know that so so it could be an observed test based on your knowledge it could be but i don't i don't know that okay so you're just willing to reject a, a test without any further inquiry on your part um well, typically you'd want the, the test, the difference between the two tests is just where they're taken. Um, if she wants to go pay for it and have it sent, it's sent to the same lab ours are. The only thing I have is I don't know that it's observed. I don't have any documentation of that and I don't have anything to follow through with that on. I guess my question is what's to keep you from picking up the phone and inquiring about that test as to whether or not it was observed. Or to keep her from picking up the phone and, and, and uh, uh, getting them to provide the documentation. Uh, That's not my question. Yes, sir. Mr. Yes, sir. Uh, um, Davis, you need to answer his question, please. Uh, there's nothing to stop me. Does the department desire Ms. Navarro to be free? Yes. And is the department willing to make a reasonable effort to confirm whether or not she is? Yes. Mr. Davis, how has my client been? Has he been working services? Um, he was uh, starting to work services when he was out uh, on parole. Um, but since he uh, got picked back up, uh, he's been unable to work any of those services. Mm -hmm. Is there anything available he could be doing in the jail? Um, there's courses in the jail, uh, how they match up to his uh, uh, service plan. Uh, I'm not sure now that he's uh, back in TDCJ, we can, we can look at him and see if there's something that matches up. I know parenting, uh, I believe he's got a copy of that that he's able to do. Have you had contact with him recently? I saw him in the Tom Green County Jail. Uh, last month, please. When was that? Last month. Okay. And do you know when he left? Um, I didn't see. Usually uh, it shows up when they leave, but I didn't see when he left. No. Right. No further questions. For the record, he remains in the Tom Green County Jail. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Graves. Thank you, Judge. Mr. Davis. Uh, Mr. Harrelson was asking you questions regarding testing and some of the services that the department requires and was asking you questions as to why you don't pick up the phone or is there any reason why you don't pick up the phone and make, make these phone calls? Is there a reason why the department has the services set up a certain way? Um, they're just set up so that, that we know uh, how the process is being done and what, what we're getting and what the results will mean. There's a validity issue. Is that fair to say? Yes, sir. 
would it be beneficial to the best interests of the respondents or the best interests of the children involved in these cases for the respondents to be able to pick and choose what services they participate in, when they participate in them, and how they participate in them? Um, it, it wouldn't be beneficial as far as uh, the children or the case going forward, no. And particular testing, is that also correct? Yes, sir. Is the department, is it the, the department's goal to deliberately be difficult, to make things difficult for a respondent to submit to a test out of spite? Making it difficult for to, res no, we, we try not to make it difficult to dismiss it. But there's a reason why the department asks for someone to go test within the next few hours, typically. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And there's also a reason why the department asks for the person or directs that person to go test at a particular place. Isn't that correct? Yes, sir. And is that because at those particular entities where they are contracted with the department to perform these the department has guidelines that that actual entity is supposed to follow. Correct. Furthermore, what's the reason for the time limitation for someone to submit when asked? Uh, the testing is supposed to be random. Uh, so when you ask for it that day, uh, then when they go in that day and, and take the test, then you know that they were taking it the same day that you asked for it on that random day. If you wait a particular amount of time, uh, then you're not testing for that day. And then uh, over time, what was positive or negative that day will change over five, to seven days. So it, it's for validity sake, is that correct? Yes, sir. It's also to <clears throat> make sure that the, the sample is truly random. Yes, sir. Is it, if, a, if a person's allowed to pick and choose winner, where he or she submits to a test that, that doesn't really provide the proper validity, does it? No, sir. And does that also translate into the certain services such as the psychological evaluation? Yes, sir. The, the psychological, a, a psychological exam is a, a fairly standardized examination amongst uh, psychologists. And so ours meet that, those guidelines and, and there are others who we don't contract with who also meet those guidelines. But typically the ones we contract with will meet the guidelines of the full psychological. Pass witness. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Keenum, any additional questions? No, Your Honor. Mr. Harrelson, any additional questions? Not of Mr. Davis, Your Honor. Right, thank you. Mr. Simons, any other questions? No, sir. Right, thank you. Ms. Keenum, did you have other witnesses? No, Your Honor. Right, thank you. Ms. Harrelson, did you have some other witnesses? I don't, Your Honor, but I do have a matter of discussion, if you will, with the court and the parties during this hearing regarding this judgment. Okay, uh, we'll come back to that in just a little bit after I see if we get any other witnesses. Uh, Mr. Simons, any other witnesses? No. And Mr. Graves? No witnesses, Judge. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Harrelson, I'll come back to you about the matter you were mentioning earlier. Yes, Your Honor, thank you. In this judgment, it's it's obviously an e-file document. It's not actually signed by the judge, but it does say signed and entered on June 24th, 2021. And it is for a lesser included offense of interference of child custody. It has conditions of probation. It's two years probated for five on a state jail felony. It has conditions of probation, which include S, Defendant is not to contact victim or victim's family, either directly or indirectly or by any other means. Further, the defendant is not to come within 100 yards of victim or victim's family, their place of residence, school, or place of employment. Now, the question is going to be, 
Who is the victim in an interference of child custody? Is the victim the parents whose custody was interfered with or is the victim the child? And that's gonna to need to be addressed here. Uh, I for one think that, I don't think every person on probation for interference with child custody is automatically banned from further exercising their child custody rights. It might be modified, but I don't think that's banned. Um, Jeanette is raising her hand, Your Honor. She may have something to clarify. I'm kind of leery of doing that without being in a breakout room. Okay, well, I can arrange that if you uh, want to visit with her about that. I do, Your Honor. All right, thank you, Mr. Harrelson. Did you have adequate time to confer? I did, Your Honor. And uh, as I said, this was not signed by the judge. The only e-signature is from the DA. Ms. Navarro informs me that at the time of the plea bargain, under subsection S, the alternative was entered by the court, which is a box that can be checked that says, if all parties agree during the plea negotiations, defendant is allowed to reside with victim or victim's family. So based on that, uh, she sent me the original ones or the proposed ones, and Ms. Navarro is going to resend the order of conviction and conditions that was actually entered by the judge, which, according to what she tells me, does not have any contact restrictions on victim. Okay. That's it. All right. Thank you. Well, uh, I don't propose to modify any orders, uh, particularly until I've seen uh, the actual version of them that's submitted. So if uh, once you receive those, you want to file some kind of motion to address that, we can pack that up at a later date and the department can address uh, if they're still opposed to uh, Ms. Navarro having contact with Serenity, they can address it at that time. And we can either take that up at trial or if not, uh, if it's filed before then, I'll try to get something set uh, before then so we can try to take it up uh, prior to trial if possible. But I would suggest you file a motion with those attached so everybody will have access to the same documents and then uh, we can address whether that would be appropriate to modify the current orders in, in place. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, anything else from anyone for today? Not today, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. The uh, court will continue the current orders in place. The department remains as temporary managing conservator in the next hearing. Subject to any hearing about visitation is the uh, trial that's currently set on October 13th, uh, 2021 at 9 a.m. I believe the uh, dismissal date for the case now is December 1st, 2021. I'm um, required to notify any parent in this type of case that because of the nature of these proceedings, your parental custodial rights and duties to your um, child may be subject to restriction or even termination, and your progress on any court orders or planning service will be reviewed at future hearings in this case. Uh, unless there's anything else, we'll be adjourned.